Good evening and welcome to Diggers and Dozers Live. I'm your host, Mark Anthony, and man alive, it's good to be back. Uh, if you're watching this live, um, please use the comments section below to uh, ask any questions or raise any points. We'd love to hear from you. Love to hear where you are in the world. Um, I'm sure not everyone is going to be in the UK. Uh, now, Halloween is almost upon us, so together with our friends at Thwaites, we've got a, a suitably spooky competition for you towards the end of the show, um, and there's a Fortnum & Mason Halloween hamper up for grabs, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, but before we get to that, let's get to the show proper. Now, as regular readers will, or readers, regular viewers will know, I normally like to wear a hat from the uh, the equipment manufacturer that we're talking about. Uh, that's not the case tonight, as you can see. Uh, I've got my new streamer hat on um, because I don't actually own a Bobcat hat. Um, so if anyone is actually watching for a Bobcat uh, and you'd like to rectify that situation, you know where to find me. Now, speaking of Bobcat, this time last week, um, the Skid Steer Giant hosted a massive online product launch to showcase a, a huge range of new models that the company is introducing in the next few weeks, next few months. As you might expect from Bobcat, there was a lot of talk about Skid Steers, compact track loaders, and mini excavators as well. And the launch also gave us the first glimpse of some new articulated and compact wheel loaders that we'll see Bobcat going head to head with the likes of Kramer, uh, Wacker Neusen, and one of our previous guests, Mechalak. You can read all about that over at the Diggers and Dozers website. Uh, and also, Bobcat has got some great videos of these new products on its YouTube channel as well. So don't do it now. Stick around for this, but you can go and have a look at that afterwards. But for those that, like me, stuck around to the very end of the presentation, there was an even more exciting insight to some of the develop developing technologies that Bobcat will be bringing to market very, very soon. And it's that technology that we'll be focusing on in this show tonight. Now, to dis discuss all of this and, and probably much more besides, I'm going to be joined by my mate, Peter Haddock. Uh, Peter's a journalist, vlogger, podcaster, and Lord alone knows what else. He spends much of his time, uh, or his working day, actually, talking about technology and how it's transforming the construction industry. But before I get Peter on, let's take a, a first look at just some of the incredible technology that Bobcat has up its sleeve. We want to make our equipment smarter so that you can be more productive at your job site. We are creating synergies with different technologies, and we're going to talk about some of them today to bring the best technologies back into your machines and to you. We're going to take your smartphone and make it a powerful tool to connect your machines. This is your way to become more efficient at the job site. The first part, the of, first this part of this is Bobcat Max, is Control, Bobcat Max Control Remote Operation. Remote op We've created an iPhone app that turns your iPhone into a remote control to operate different functionalities on your machine. That's right. You can plug in a simple device into any of our SJC equipped loaders all the way back to 2004, and you could use your iPhone to do operations remotely. This is a platform for running future services. And we are launching in Europe soon. Let's have a look at what remote operation would look like with Bobcat Max Control.
Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Mark. And uh, how are you? I hope uh, all the viewers are enjoying their evening as well. Well, speaking of all the viewers, uh, just to let you know, we've got Kenneth Hatcher, who is here almost as often as I am. Uh, he's in South Wales. He's tuning in. Uh, Mark Lawton is in South Yorkshire, and he's tuning in as well. So good evening, Ken, and good evening, Mark. Um, Peter, before we get into the specifics of that Bob te Bobcat technology, I thought it'd be interesting. Uh, I, I thought it was really interesting that the company chose to bury all this stuff right at the very end of their product launch. You, you spent a lot of your time talking about technology within construction. Is there still a feeling out there that technology is sort of perceived as just a bit less important than the iron itself? Well, funny you say that, Mark, because I uh, was on the phone to Mark Lawton earlier before the show, and we were talking about the Continuous Automated Plant Group, which is all about technology. So we know that 3D machine control has been mandated by Highways England. There's other things coming down the line, like smart compaction, which is just going to be built in. And we know that actually we've got a big problem with st uh, stolen plant. So things like security built into your phone and apps and stuff like that, it's just coming in all of the time. And, you know, we're going to see this transforming the industry. And you look at the applications that people are putting onto their machines, and you're talking about sort of e-fence things like Caterpillar's doing, but you're talking about that what Bobcat has done has been incredible because what they're doing is they're bringing it to the consumer marketplace for what we're really all used to doing. I mean, this is my iPhone. You know, I spend my life on my iPhone. It's probably better than the computer I'm on right now, to be honest. And then the iPhone 12 is coming out and, you know, people haven't ordered it quickly. They're waiting for weeks or months because it's transforming the industry with LiDAR sensors on the pros and things like that. And yeah, it's just crazy what's out there. So no, technology is here. It's here to stay. It's only going to get more important. I think it was in interesting you picked up on that because the, the form factor of, of what they're producing there at Bobcat is is one of the things that really attracted me. I, as an industry, I think we've spent years trying to convince young people in particular that an excavator's controls are a bit like a PlayStation or an Xbox. But rather than trying to replicate you know, that familiar device. Bobcat's just basically gone the whole hog and, and used a, f a familiar device. That's an important leap, isn't it? I think what's really important about what Bobcat have done is that actually they've taken the industry by storm, in my opinion, because what they've done is they've said to people, look, just like you can see your Tesla car, just like you can see and buy things and do things securely uh, for banking apps and things like that, what we're doing is we're bringing all of that into the Bobcat ecosystem. But what was really, really important about that is actually they're saying, look, this is what you can do now, but look at what's going to be able to happen later on. And I know that you're going to talk about it, Mark, but I'm going to steal a bit of your thunder here. 2004 compatible machines with an iPhone I don't understand how on earth they've managed it. Obviously, all this is Canvas related, but you, know, you could go back. And if you've got a 2004 unit, you can use your iPhone and remote control it. That is incredible because we know backwards compatibility doesn't even work with the, the Xbox and the, the PlayStations you mentioned earlier. You've got to buy a new one. Well, that's incredible. Yeah. I, I think they've been very sensible with that because obviously not only does that give a lot of their existing customers the opportunity to use some of that technology, but it also means that when that technology arrives, they've immediately got a huge audience already sat there waiting for it, haven't they? Yeah, and I think this is what's really important because, you know, some of the, the big issues we've had uh, in the media have been a, with big games, for example, like Fortnite battling away with, with Apple and iPhone to for, for supremacy and to get their subscription uh, fees and things like that. But what Bobcat has done is said, look, everyone, what we're not going to do is force you to buy a brand new machine. What we are going to do is we're going to say, the one most important thing we all know about, we're going to keep you safe -er than you were before. Because you can only see on some of the stuff I've looked at, what's the biggest problem about using a bit of plant and equipment? The biggest issue is when you're getting it on and off a trailer and when you're getting on and off the machine. 
slips, trips, falls, broken legs, ankles. Those can ruin people's careers. They can also take you out of the situation. They can close down a whole construction site. Totally. But, you no, know, now, hold on a minute, Mark. Just going to get my phone out. Just going to reverse it off the uh, off the trailer um, uh, from our friends at ATE. They've just uh, developed this trailer for my stuff and all my gear, reversing it all off. Yeah, there we go. That's I'm just going to get in it now. It's nice and easy to find because it's right next to my feet. You know, but that that's important. You know, stopping all of that means that, guess what? I might go to the likes of Ritchie Brothers and buy a second-hand Bobcat because I know I can control it from my iPhone. What a great way of getting people into the Bobcat brand uh, when they're not necessarily going to be able to afford to buy a new one. And, and at a time like this when, you know, the economy is looking sketchy at best, you know, what better time? You know, you can get the very latest tech with, you know, yesterday's prices. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then... <clears throat> You know, you, you've got it. It's accessible. And, you know, what you, you can see is for whatever price or rate of subscription they're going to do. But what you can see is, can I use this in my day to day business? It's like saying to somebody that's never had a smartphone, here's a smartphone. Off you go. And it's like, well, I can experiment with this. How does it work? What? applications does it work in i was looking at the farmers video that we'll we'll see uh, uh, of them remote operating well everybody knows there's a great big bull that doesn't like human beings in a farmer's field well <laughs> guess what? i can just send in the machine to feed all the cattle i don't even have to climb over the fence you know because we're not just talking construction applications really either here i mean you you talk about demolition a lot and obviously the demolition industry has been right at the forefront of remote control operation and you can see those those applications that are really working there but the every day to day like that is just more and more simplified you know and i think what it allows us to do is say well how can we utilize this test it and then move forward so yeah i tell you what i'm gonna get a fleet of these things because it's actually working or it's changed the way i'm working full stop you know, and then we're going to come on to that in some of the other innovations that they've brought into that technology about changing the way in which you buy and subscribe to plant as well. Yeah, we, we, we will get on to that in a second. But one of the reasons I wanted you on this particular show, Peter, is, you, you know, you're a major exponent of the iPhone and you, you pretty much run your business on, on your iPhone. You shoot and edit videos. Yeah. record your podcast upload them from from your iphone as well and and you know like me i think you you'd agree that they, they are a fantastic device but they do have their limitations with things like battery life and there's also a lot of sites out there where i know i mean particularly in the demolition field where the use of mobile phones is prohibited so is a smartphone really the suitable machine control solution my personal belief is it is but i think there's a bit of a learning curve there isn't there I think there's two points you've raised there, Mark. One of them um, is typical construction sites, unless they're in inner city brownfield locations, can be in remote locations where you've got connectivity issues and things like that. But that's the where the sort of Bluetooth element comes into play. You've also got the, the sort of accessibility issues without the phone, though, because, you know, these remote control chuck it over my head and get the get the levers out and connect that in they're expensive devices if you want to have them because you know those are what people use already on the likes of bobcat machines so what we're saying with this and i'm sure it's not aimed at being something that's you're going to use this phone with this machine all day and operate it all day you know, this is the smartphone application is for the smart bits of the applications or for the dangerous bits of the applications or for the bits in which we think, well, actually, wouldn't it be easier if I was to stood next to the trailer and I could see how things were coming off and, and, and control it that way rather than being in the cab and can't see things. This particular point of the site is quite muddy, boggy or whatever. I'm working in that. I've only got a small task to do. The last thing I want to do is bog down the machine and then have to actually get out of the machine, wade through a, a, a bog to to then get back. You know, so there are these sort of applications. And hey, I know I've got to go underneath something which you know may not have anything falling from height whatsoever, but I'm going underneath something. So I tell you what, I'm going to get out of the cab and I'm going to actually 
just take that machine underneath that that ob uh, object or underneath that that thing that structure so it's an in and out thing and i think you know i've got a big bulky battery on my iphone 11 but you know you've got that but also you've got to recognize that it's going to be supplied by your business so the iphone bit is going to be your work phone which is going to be charged you're going to have your dock in the machine and it, you know and you might even leave it overnight in a secure box that that bobcat or the compartment that bobcat have placed in there and charge it up overnight so it has full charge you know so i don't have a problem with that. i don't you, you rightly mentioned, you know, this idea of, of operating a machine, you know, where there might be falling objects and that kind of thing. And I, I think that's one of the things that stuck out for me with what we're about to see, because we all often talk about technology applied to increasing efficiency and productivity. But I think Bobcat have done a very, very good job of, of focusing on the potential safety benefits as well. Let's take a look at, at just what it is they have got up their sleeve. Next up, with this same platform, we can do something even more cool. Customers tell us all the time that they want to find a way to avoid obstacles at a job site. And hey, well, we heard you. Using the same phone and the same platform, you could take pictures in augmented reality and send them back to the machine. When you then run the machine, whether in it or outside, you will not and you cannot hit those objects. You can create virtual curbs, barriers, walls, to make sure you never hit them. Let's take a peek at that. combine those two features that I just showed you, your machine will be able to do tasks autonomously. You'll be able to navigate through your job site from point A to point B with one centimeter accuracy. Isn't that wicked? Let's have a look at this future feature of Bobcat Max Control. Now, that's an area that you know way more about me uh, than I do, Peter, because of obviously your, your connections with Leica. But when I think of site surveys for autonomous operation, I tend to think of really expensive drone flybys, massive civil engineering projects or, or mining projects. Based on what I've just seen there, Bobcat seems to have condensed all of that into an iPhone app. That's going to make it so much more accessible, isn't it? Well, look, what, there's a number of different things with this, really. The first off thing to say is, you know, with the, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, these, these smartphones are having LiDAR sensors in them. So that's depth of field. So what you've got is that you've got the ability to make that really, really super clear and uh, to the actual Bobcat app and therefore to the machine. And what you've also got to remember is that a lot of these machines, again, there we were talking about carrying and loading, but a lot of machines do one very, very clever thing. They dig holes and they make holes 
and they fill holes and they drive around a site. Now, the biggest, most important thing, and again, uh, you know, I was talking about this literally a couple of hours ago with, with, with Mark, is it's so expensive and it's dangerous and it's just the worst thing to do to have a utility strike. OK, so imagine we've got a hammer on the bobcat here and we've, we, we, we don't know what's underneath the ground. We have a utility strike. Again, you've got really big health and safety issues for the operator. It's the number the person that's in the cab. Um, you've also got a sh massive shutdown of the site. But hey, if you had that surveyed by, like you say, you know, like a Systems has got all of the drones uh, survey uh, equipment. They've got all of the what I call I like to call them the lawn mowers. Um, the, the, <laughs> the, the sort of underground detection radar systems, so they can tell you exact depths of where that that cable is, whether it's electric cable or that that water utility, or or God forbid my broadband, uh, uh, which has <laughs> now been serious trouble. Um, but you know, all of that comes together to say what they're showing us now is obviously. The, the first part of that, on, uh, on ground, over ground, and underground. And I think that's really, really important. I mean, I'll get a you know, classic example. I wish I had the system myself a few months ago because I smashed the wing mirror off my car because my car was so tight to all the different spaces. I didn't know what thing was beeping where. My, my head's going around like that, thinking what's going on, and then smash. The, the the bollard that they showed there, the small bollard, is what took the wing mirror off. And so, you know, we're seeing again that in what we what we do with normal cars and, again, you know, the, 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 the brand-new cars. But, you know, that's just really critical to how we move about the site safely and how we – move forward in what you're calling the, the journey, I guess, you know, because we're, what we're doing is we're geofencing these parts of the site. So you only have to geofence once, hopefully, and say, this is our site. We've done it once. Go into site A, site B, site three, whatever it is. And that's the map for, for all of this to happen. So what we can now see is the ability to say, well, actually, if we can do this, uh, and we can do this simply through an iPhone application. Well, what we can do is we can go down that semi-autonomous route where people can trust the information and the data that's going in to allow that machine to operate safely in a semi-autonomous fashion. And therefore, I mean, what you saw there was, a, you know, a, 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 an individual sending the machine off and then receiving the machine. Well, come on. What we can have is a phone, I'm sure, surely that's down the line with Bobcat as well. That individual's controlling three or four Bobcats from one iPhone. So we've got one operator sending and receiving and receiving this train of Bobcat-style machines that are doing different things on site. They've all set up this geofence and this, this element there. And that's brilliant. But what was really stand out for me, one centimeter accuracy. I don't think if I gave you a line to walk down, Mark, you could walk down it in one centimetre accuracy. Well, you, you can know, see me walking, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, that's the, the kicker. When people say autonomy or semi-autonomy, it's great, but it's only great if it actually works within fine tolerances. So you're talking 10 or 15 centimetres. Well, that, it's just not going to work. You know, 10 or 15 centimetres up and down for a utility strike, you're done, you know? Uh, and so that in itself, the accuracy levels, I am so impressed by that. Uh, and, and you know, when we see the Bobcats in action, I always call them really the, the Swiss army knife of the industry. So when you've got those different elements and accuracies from the use of buckets, from the use of hammers, from the use of other attachments um, that are, are numerous on the Bobcats, then that's that's great. Uh, and I think, you know, you're seeing, again, more demolition. So imagine you've got to take materials inside a waste handling uh, facility or clean up, or you've got to go onto a ship and you've got to pull all the grain from the sides of the ships for the grabbers to come down. You can do that with, 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 with somebody not being in the hold 
uh, and you can geofence it all. It's very funny you should mention that as an application. Um, I don't know if you can see that there. Mark Lawton has just said cleaning yeah. hazardous waste or smelly waste could be easier. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the applications for this, I think, are, are absolutely endless. Yeah. Um, just to, before we get on with the, the show a little bit more, we've had a, a couple of people saying uh, hello. Um, Nigel Horton has joined us. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Gavin Nelson. Uh, has said hi Peter and hi uh, Mark. That's the wrong one. That's the one there. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to let you answer this one. Um, Eric is asking, where is the best heavy equipment school? Oh, school. Uh, well, I, I tell you, the one I've been to the most actually is uh, Western College. Um, the, uh, they've actually done a really clever thing, um, and they have gone and worked with Plant Force, uh, the uh, Plant Force Rental is the big sort of national hirer. And what they've done is they've created a whole school around plant training and operation, which is not just for young people to go to college. They've got the buildings there, and literally you take probably 30 footsteps out of the building and you're on uh, what is, is a testing playground. So inside you're doing simulators, then you're doing outside exactly the same thing in a fully uh, 3D modelled uh, area so that you know you can dig down in the right levels or they've put a pretend um, bit of utility down there. So, I look, it's not necessarily the best. It's the one that I've been to the most. Uh, I know there is quite an interesting one being built uh, with uh, HS2 in mind, uh, not very far from where I live. So I'm sure I'm going to be reporting on that. So uh, keep your uh, keep your eyes uh, peeled out there. But and again, there's there's other things where it's around what kind of thing you you're after. Because I know again another supplier that's got cat simulators. They're only two in the UK, worth a fortune, and they actually do everything you can imagine the health and the, all the, all these different things. So so it depends what kind of thing you're after. But you know some great facilities out there and there's only going to be more because you know quite frankly we need to train people on these things and i know in particular what plant force are doing there they're really trying to give people the training to optimize their performance using the solutions as a guide not it's not going to do your job for you operators you know it's a guide but if you can use the guide if you can use these functions for bobcat and you can use them well, well, that's going to help you become less fatigued and be safer. Absolutely. And you see, this is why I have Peter on, because he knows these sort of things. Um, we've had a, a question here from uh, Kenneth Thatcher. Is this for excavators or just skid steers? As far as I'm aware, it's skid steers at the moment, but you'd have to think that this, this technology has applications basically across the board, and, and, and certainly not just with Bobcat. I'm, Bobcat have, have been very quick to, to market, but I'm fairly sure that everybody else will be, if they're not on the bandwagon already, they'll be leaping onto it fairly soon. Now, Peter, getting back to, to, to the Bobcat thing, uh, obviously I, I listen to your podcast and, and you talk about demolition to demolition as a concept. One of the things I think that struck me about this um, Bobcat app, obviously, you know, from a, a user's point of view, it, it facilitates, you know, easier operation, safer operation and all that kind of thing. But obviously, you know, there will be a data capture element to that as well. And I think that's an important aspect of, of site surveying, isn't it? You know, the, the very fact that, you know, with BIM and that kind of thing, you know, we'll be able to look back in, in months and years to come. What did that machine do on that day in what area, won't we? Yes. And one of the critical things about that, Mark, is that you will optimize a site layout. So the first thing you do when you get on site is you go, well, I took some cabins there, I took some stuff there, and I took some things there, and blah, 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 blah. But actually, you know, that before you even get onto site, obviously you survey the site and get all your plans. But where are you going to put the equipment? Where are you going to put the facilities? And how are you going to do that? So that's that's point one. Point two is around machine usage and the impact that machine usage has on the environment. So the, the most important thing is move it once, as everybody knows, move it well if you can. Brilliant. Great. But if you can not idle and spend uh, idling time uh, burning fuel and, and, and creating carbon and obviously cost and obviously 
you know, you're burning, something is working, it's the engine, you know, and so therefore the engine wear, all of those things come in into the, the carbon calculator as it goes up. Well, imagine you've got this and you've got that remote control capability and you can just switch it on and switch it on, you know, and you, you don't, as an operator, have to be in the cab. Now, look, there's a great, there's, there's a lot of people now have to be in the cabs and I think idling time is, it must be going up at the moment because we want to keep them COVID safe. And I get that, you know, that's really important right now. Um, but imagine that you're remote controlling from a more comfortable position because you're sat in a site cabin or a site structure where, where you're, 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 the stuff's in front of you, whether it's the waste uh, facility, whether it's the, yeah, the the site itself. So, you know, so those are the things that are important. But also as we move forward with semi-autonomous vehicles, what they can do and what we're seeing in mining is that the actual vehicle is doing the surveying as well. So as we dig, as we move, as we as, as we, we do things on site, you know, in the mining context, the, oh, there's a huge amount of cameras. They're surveying as they go on. The machine's telling us how much they've actually uh, loaded or unloaded and where they've actually loaded and unloaded. We know that the contaminated material is on bay A. We know it, the other stuff is on bay C. And we know that that's been done properly. So when you've got people coming onto sites uh, for, say, contaminated materials, and developing solutions like Dunton Environmental I visited earlier a couple of weeks ago, it's all mapped. And with that mapping comes information. And with that mapping uh, comes what I call the, the demolition end-to-end. -end. So from your de demolishing to your surveying to your, to your earthworks to your building to then your demolishing again. And that is all vital. And with Bobcat creating all this uh, connectivity there and easy access connectivity. Great. Now, I, I personally, I'd have been quite happy with all of that, but <laughs> Bobcat had a, another couple of tricks up its sleeve, including one that I find absolutely intriguing. Let's take a look. Next up, features on demand. We understand that you customers have job sites that change by size or location all the time. What if I told you that our new R-Series loaders may have built-in software and hardware features that you could enable in the future? You wanna have a peek? Let's have a look. to turn our front windshield into an interactive touch display. You can run all kinds of camera feed, augmented reality, virtual obstacles on it. We want to create synergies between you and the machine. We are extremely excited about it and we look forward to showing you this sooner than you would expect. Let's see how that would look like. Now, before we get into the tech, one of the things I found most interesting there was the fact that some of that was listed as subscription services. I might be getting ahead of myself here, to me, but to me that suggests that Bobcat is considering an additional cost in some way to level up a machine's capabilities. 
that's a really interesting concept, isn't it? What, what, what do you think of that, Peter? Well, what's really interesting about this, Mark, and this is clever in a number of different ways, okay, because we've seen people have different models in their ranges. So you're going to have the, the low-end model, the premium model, and maybe something in between, right? I think what Bobcat are saying to the market here is we're going to build the ultimate machine in every uh, model. So we're going to have a model that is the premium machine that's coming down the factory line, okay? Why? Because if you want to buy it as the, the baseline model, then we'll sell it that to you, but we'll not enable all these different features. If you want to get it to the medium level, then we'll say for a subscription, you can increase the hydraulics a bit or the power a bit. If you then want to get it to the ultimate level, then you can go even further. <clears throat> so what that means is a number of different things. What that means is you're streamlining the factory for Bobcat, which is obviously you know a huge cost saving. You're then saying to the people in the uh, in the driver's seat, we've not just given you a basic model. We've given you the model that's going to be able to do everything. But you might want to buy it here, and you might want to do things over there. Now, in the UK, you think about the UK market. The UK market for us is around hire and plant hire. It's a dominating part of the industry. What if I'm a plant hirer and I go, I'm going to buy a skid steer over here or a skid steer over here. Guess what? I'm going to buy Bobcat because I know that I can make more money for each potential hire as people go, of course, we want the cheap version. But when we get to site and we're doing, like the Swiss Army Knife does, lots of different jobs and we need more power and we're, we're, we're doing a different application, the hire company can give them the option to buy uh, five hours at high power, you know, or five hours of the reverse fan. The hire company can then make some more money. And then what we can have is a scenario where Bobcat obviously makes their margin on that as well. But what we've got is we haven't got the need, again, to do what would normally happen, whereas you'd have to take a machine off-site or put it to the side and hire another one in to do those tasks. Well, that is wasting time, resources. You need another operator, potentially, because you're going to put that other one to use in other menial tasks. And also, you've got to transport it there and back to the site. And you've got two machines doing what you could have done with one machine. So from an environmental cost uh, and fuel impact, it doesn't make any sense. So this is a shrewd move from Bobcat. And what is really exciting about this is this is a model breaker. Uh, and this is something that if I'm a plant hirer, I'm going to go, hold on a minute. You know, all of these different features, all this iPhone, and I can get somebody a model in the future that's actually going to be able to do all of the different things, and they can subscribe to that. Um, absolutely tremendous. And think about it in other applications that are not like the skid steer. Think about telehandlers. You know, what about this sort of technology coming to telehandlers where you might say, I want a 17 meter telehandler? Well, I, as the plant operator, know that basically 17 meters you're going to be doing something where probably at some point you're going to need 20 meters yep but what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that model that bobcat's talking about here i'm going to say there's your 17 meters and your 17 meter higher when or if you do need that 20 meters we'll give it to you for a few hours so this is absolutely game changing and you know and if you can squeeze them out the, the model ranges then actually you can produce more and it becomes more cost effective because you're not putting different components on or whatever you're just focusing on that delivery and i think that's brilliant a, a real brilliant idea and again i'd love to see something like their the the pre that that model coming with 3D machine control. I mean, the last time I saw Bobcat was on site at a plant, a plant work show with the full 3D machine control system on it for grading on the Bobcat, you know. So they're ahead of the game with those sort of things. Um, now, moving on, though, um, you can also think about, hey, well, maybe I could unlock attachments 
and, and other things like that that goes with that sort of subscription piece. So maybe I get um, the Bobcat arriving on site with a few attachments and actually I can unlock those attachments as and when I need it as well and higher on demand. So higher on demand means that if we've got a situation where we know there's, say, the shipping container scenario where we know that this unit's going to be uh, needed and we are a, the plant hire that goes, well, actually, you know, quite frankly, we're making good money on there. We don't want to take it on and off or off hire it. We're going to give a hire on demand service. Uh, and then that all plays into that, uh, that sort of changing the model as well. And so fleet management and all the data that you get from all of that information comes into play again. And then Bobcat is leading there and it's going to be the, the, the item of choice. But, you know, what I liked as well is you think about, again, we've mentioned this, when you're going on site and you're waiting for that job, okay? Um, I know my friend's got a Tesla and basically he sits there when he's getting it supercharged, does a lot of mileage, and he plays the driving game. You know, I love that the, the fact that, that you, your screen is right there in front of you. You know, when I'm waiting around in – turn off the machine, and I know they've got electric machines coming as well, Mark, because they announced those in the press launch. And, you know, I could play a game. I could do some exercise. I could do, you know, I could do some well-being stuff on the screen. So that would be great. And, of course, when we talked about earlier, the biggest, more more interesting applications for the work site is actually maybe I could see what's underneath me. Maybe I could see uh, through the screen those utilities that I'm digging to and that I know I'm at the level of because maybe, just maybe, something's been missed. And then, you know, uh, as we come down, we can start mapping over things and saying, well, there's other things here as well. Uh, you know, but all of that visualization enables you to be safer and, and more engaged. And obviously, you can turn it turn it off and things like that. So I think you know, that's it's great, but I'd love to see you know Bobcat owners doing doing this in their cab while they're waiting to actually um, do the work, you know, and getting a bit of exercise because they've got to level three hundred and fifty two of Bobcat's super game or whatever. <clears throat> I think that might be the first time I've ever heard the, the term plant operator and exercise used in the same <laughs> sentence. That's, uh, that's now we, we've had a question here from from Kenneth Hatcher about um, can Bobcat monitor how the machines are being used. My guess is absolutely. I mean, that's I, I can't imagine them creating a, an app of this description without some, doing some sort of sort of two way data capture, and and that brings me on to another point because if they are taking that data, you know, I, I know that there's always this this concern about Big Brother is watching and and all that kind of thing, but that has real benefits, doesn't it? If you're actually logging that data because you can use that to inform training and that kind of thing. So, you know, if somebody's using too much fuel or they're being particularly hard on a machine, all of that data is being captured. And, it, you know, rather than, you know, it's not a sacking offence, but, you know, what say we give you another half day training on how to get your fuel consumption down or or how you can, you know, do the same job with lower revs and that kind of thing. That's a, that's a step forward as well, isn't it? Yeah, and look, I mean, we all have got to use data in a safe way and we've got to you know, use it in a legal way and, you know, and, I, I'm a great believer in the fact that data can be an enabler to help people not just um, come into the industry, but help people um, optimize the performance of machines. One of the big gripes I've got is you create all of this technology, all of these machines and things like that, but the time uh, is not put in to actually saying to the operators, here's how to operate it. So if you've got an iPhone uh, phone like that and you've got all these apps, you know, I'm, I'm for sure Bobcat are going to have a tutorial app that's going to be able to tell you how to, to use the machine better. And actually, you know, what I've seen in the quarrying sector, for example, um, is a lot of that data capture and things like that and reporting has been there for some time. And what you see is a team on site sharing that data and information and, you know, better operators mentoring other operators and going, and people going, well, I'm struggling with this. And they go, are you in performance mode? Oh, no, I'm not. Well, just whack it into performance mode and, and you'll, you'll solve all your problems. You know, and I think that the message from Bobcat and the, the wider part of their launch was also about comfort, you know. And so it's also 
about that's about fatigue that's about helping the operator and so again if we can get this data mined from different applications and people can start entering that uh, and their applications then we can get uh, people getting the right support of how to use the equipment better uh, and better for their own well-being you know and i think uh, that's important yeah big brother watching it it's it's not going to be used like that and if it is the, the the business that tries to do that it's going to be the business that's going to have the operators walking out the door because they are in demand people and a good operator you have to look after them because they'll pay you back um by being a good a good operator um no, in, absolutely you know We've touched on the uh, the touchscreen. Touched on the touchscreen. I can't believe I just said that. We've touched on the touchscreen display. Um, you you and I both sat in a lot of machines over at Con Expo, and and I don't know about you, but I was just staggered by the number of dials and displays and controls that are now in the operator's eye line. Particularly, I think at a time when manufacturers are highlighting the, the dangers of distracted driving from sort of mobile phones and, and that kind of thing. I had a point on that, which, you know, as far as I'm concerned, condensing all that dis onto a display seems like a good idea, but is that going to be a bigger distraction? But while we've been talking, Mark, Mark Lawton's just made a very good uh, point here. Uh, I was told by a driver he prefers to operate with his front window open all day. So, <laughs> so, so I was looking at the, 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 this great technical issue where, in actual fact, some people will just have the window open and won't be able to see it at all. Yeah, I think you know it's 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 one of these things that people do um, have a lot of messages to me, particular experienced operators saying, you know, I don't I don't want to use this, I don't want to do that, you know. And uh, but I met a guy called Murray Stokes who's coming close to retirement, and he uh, was in a farmer's field on a D7E recently, and he'd never ever touched machine control, and he was taken through that carefully by um steve claybrook from from like geo systems and you know within days he'd actually mastered it and now he actually goes on to site and uh gets there early in the morning like operators do they're always the first on site and he's got his map and he's got everything there and he's using it and he says to me look i didn't i don't want to i didn't want to use it i didn't want to use it i didn't like it but he's admitted to me and i've got a video on this on my uh, YouTube channel, but that actually helps him uh, reduce his fatigue levels. And it's just a guide. You don't have to use it if you don't want to use it. You know, and if you want your window open and you want that that breeze, you know, it's not going to be the case, is it? But simply having it there is an ability for somebody to use it. You know, so everybody's oh, and like, don't use it. But some people, particularly young people that are coming into the industry or people that are just, you know, just like my son's got three monitors to play his computer game. You know, I could barely, you know, be distracted at one that pings in other things. They've got three. So those are the type of people this is going to appeal to, you know? Absolutely. It, it's interesting you mentioned the operators because obviously that's what it's all about. And I, I think one of the things that pleased me most about all of this technology that, that Bobcat showed was the fact that, they they still have a role for the operator. You know, there's, there is always this con concern, particularly when you talk about autonomous machines, that operator jobs are under threat somehow. But Bobcat seems to be placing operators front and centre just with the help of, of some very fancy technology, don't they? Yeah, and I think that what why that's interesting is the route in which they've taken. Because the, the iPhone route in which they've taken is really smart because – most people now have a smartphone, know how to use it, know about an app ecosystem, know they can touch, do this, that, and the other. So most people are used to this. What you're not trying to say is, here's a great big thing you put around your neck, or here's a great big interactive something or other. No, it's just a phone. You know how to do to use a phone. You've used it before. You've played games. You're candy crushed on it like crazy. So, you know... You, you basically know how to use this, but what that's allowing the operator to do is if they want, they can change some of their behaviors. Like I said before, if they think, actually, you know what, I hate loading and unloading this machine you know, from sitting in the cab because then I've got muddy boots, I have to step out, uh, you know, I've, I've had a few slips and near misses. I'm going to get out of the cab, I'm going to turn the phone on, 
I was going to do it like that. And that's fine. You know, and at the end of the day, if you've got the ability to change your behavior because it's there, you can choose to do it or not. Without Bobcat doing it, though, you can't have that choice. And without Bobcat doing it for a 2004 machine, you can't even learn on something that, you know, you never thought in a million years would have that kind of um, capability. And, no. and that is brilliant. Uh, Peter, look, I, we're, we're getting very dangerously close now to an hour-long show. And I, I, I know what you and I are like when we get talking. Um, so I'm going to let you get back to your evening. Before I let you go, um, I know uh, from our previous discussions, you're currently working um, very actively involved in a children's charity at the moment. What, what exactly is your involvement? And, and, you know, is there anything that we and our viewers can do to help? Look, Mark, I, I, had, a, I, I had a really quite... A, 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 I'd, I wouldn't call it stressful, but emotional a day a few days ago at the, we the weekend because um, I actually talked to a friend of mine that is heavily involved in um, a charity called Embrace. Um, and that uh, charity embraces for child victims of crime. And, you know, if you go onto the, the website embracevoc.org.uk, um, you'll find that charity. It's, it's a relatively small charity. And, and there's a video on there that I watched. Um, it was called Reese's Story, and I won't go into detail on it, but it kind of just hit me like a wall, you know. And we've got Christmas coming up, and we have children out there that are, uh, are in really difficult situations. Uh, we have children that have been abused, unfortunately. And Embrace works with law enforcement agencies and safeguarding professionals to, to, to try and keep these, these, these children safe. Um, and they form proper partnerships with these organizations and they're there to help. And uh, so what they provide is a sort of emotional, practical and specialist, they call it cheer up support services. And, and, and those sort of things are to say, you know, it's not your fault, you know. And, and as we come back, unfortunately, into another lockdown situation, as we've been in lockdown situations, the demands on this charity have been huge. So um, because people have supported me out there and clients have supported me, I'm, I'm personally donating a thousand pounds to the charity and I'm donating it now because I want that money to be used to support children in the run up to Christmas, Christmas and after Christmas. And they basically, you know, this phrase, I'm going to read it to you, whatever is needed to help a child cope with what has happened, recover and move on is what we aim to deliver. And, you know, I just couldn't, just hearing one or two stories, I just, uh, you know, I know I couldn't even begin to know what to do and what to say um, to children. And, you know, I, if, if people feel like me that, you know, it's going to be a, a strange Christmas. I don't need anything, Mark, for Christmas. Um, you know, I'm not going Just to go. Just as well, I haven't got you anything. <laughs> exactly. Got I'm not going to go on any Christmas parties. But, you know, I'm just going to put some money there to basically say, you know, that's something that I would hope, if we can make one small bit of difference to a, a young child's life, then perhaps that makes an ultimate difference and, and they're going to be supporting uh, children in my local area uh, and they are national as well. And, um, you know, so that's embracevoc.org.uk and, um, yeah, any support you can give would be hugely beneficial and like most charities, that they are struggling for funding right now. Okay, well, obviously we've got people watching this online. I, I, you know, obviously you can tell from Peter's mood there, you know, just how that's affected him. Uh, to help you along your way, Peter, I, I have about my person. I've always got about my person a D11 model. Always, I, I, it goes with, with me everywhere. I don't know if you can see that particularly well. It's a cat D11. Um, it's box got, fresh. Never... You've got me on full screen. Let's let's show the. I tell you what. Let's take you off full screen. That will make more sense. There you go. That's that's what the D11 looks like. 
Oh, oh, it's a collectible. It's a collectible, yeah. Um, I've, I've already had a look on eBay, and according to eBay, who are the font of all knowledge on these things, this thing is worth about 80 quid. Uh, if anyone that's watching now would like to make a donation of 80 quid to Peter's charity, this will be in the post for you tomorrow. Um, failing that, uh, as soon as I get a chance, I'll whack this on eBay myself, and all the proceeds will go to Peter's charity that way. Um, I'd love it to go to a, a diggers and dozers for you. That would be much, much more my, my preference. Um, so I'm going to keep this open for the remainder of the show. Uh, but after that, it is going on eBay. So, um, Peter, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'll keep you posted on the, the, the sale of the model. Um, no. Thanks ever so much for your time tonight. Very, very best of luck with the, uh, with the charity and have a good evening. Thanks ever so much, everybody. And uh, thanks again, Mark, for letting me do what I love doing, chatting about technology and diggers. So, everybody have a great evening, and uh, thanks again. Just before you go, model sold. Mark oh. Lawton, Mark Lawton, if, if you could see me, I'm big giving you a huge, very, very manly hug down the line. Mark, you're an absolute star. I'll get, I'll get Peter to send me your address. This yep. thing will be in the post for you tomorrow. You're an absolute That's star. Lovely. Thanks, Mark. Brilliant. Cheers, Peter. You take care. Thanks, Mark. Bye-bye. Well, that was a better outcome than I could possibly have hoped for. So uh, thank you very much indeed, Mark Lawton. You're, you're an absolute legend. So, uh, Now, assuming there are still a few of you here, and I know looking at my screen, there are still quite a few of you here. Um, those fine folks over at Thwaites, site dumper people, uh, are running a competition at the moment on their Facebook page. And it's quite a prize, uh, a Halloween hamper from Fortnum & Mason, uh, which is no bad thing. Uh, I'm not entering, partly because they won't let me, and also because as a borderline diabetic, the contents of that basket would probably kill me. However, let's have a look at the video, and I'll tell you more about how you can enter when we get back. Tradition dictates, and I like tradition, that at Halloween we offer you, our friends and customers, the chance to win a hair-raising prize. So come closer. Not that close. We need to maintain social distancing. And let me tell you more. I have in my hand a 3.6 kilo pumpkin. Behind me is a Thwaites nine-ton dumper. So, my blood-curdling question is, how many pumpkins of this weight can this devilish dumper deliver? Is it A, 250, B, 2,500, or C, 22,500? There's no trick, only a treat. The winner who will be drawn at random to win this spookily good Fortnum and Mason Halloween hamper the next 10 names drawn will each be receiving a Thwaites winter warmer woolly hat. Reply on Facebook by the dead of midnight on Halloween, October 31st. And then look out for an eerie email if you are the winner. The very worst of luck to you all. You honestly have no idea how much that guy reminds me of my old English teacher. Teacher, uh, Now, as much as we'd like to receive your comments and your answers, don't send them to us because they won't count. Uh, instead, head on over to uh, the Thwaites Facebook page and you can enter their competition there. As the guy said, uh, you've got until midnight, the stroke of midnight, on Halloween, which I think off the top of my head is probably Saturday. Uh, we wish you luck. It looks a, a very good prize. I've actually got one of the Thwaites woolly hats fantastic so even if you don't win the top prize it's well worth entering so head on over to the facebook page of um the good folks at thwaites and very best of luck to you uh, that just about wraps up this episode um it looks like we're going to be doing quite a few more of these um because peter i think has just gone into tier two i think we're where we are is probably fairly close 
Um, but the industry has still got uh, is still producing news. It's still producing new machines and and new applications for those machines. And obviously, as we've seen tonight, new technology as well. Um, so, in order to get that sort of information out to you, it looks like we're going to be doing more of these live shows in the very very near future. Um, so, keep an eye out for us on Facebook and on YouTube and on LinkedIn and everywhere else. Uh, until then, just remember one small message. Some say they're live. Some of us really are. Until next time, have a great evening. And Mark Lawton, once again, thank you very much indeed, sir. You're an absolute